Hello everyone. Today, because of the success of the last one, I'm going to show one how to make a nice little LARP pouch like this. I call them dump bags. I don't know if that's correct. Literally a tiny little thing with a buckle. You undo. Folds out and you've got a nice little drawstring dump bag. And you just have that on your hip. Obviously it is open top still for most of the part. But it does fold up quite nice and neatly. And you can store all of your stuff. And it reminds me of those nice little recycling bags you can get. And recycling can't ever be bad, right? I mean you could have a ton of these on your belt. And not really have to worry about them. But this is a quick little prototype that I made. And I will be doing a giveaway for one as well because I don't need two. So I'm going to show you guys how to make it. It probably takes about what, 30 minutes ish so let's get to it what you're going to need for this one is a sewing machine or kind of something or if you can hand stitch you can hand stitch it some string um a hole punch a knife or a pair of scissors a rivet gun although not essential can't remember where i used one now did i use a rivet gun yes i did two little points there but again not necessary and some fabric now the original one i had was made out of this stuff but i do not have enough left for my template i'm going to use the same template probably make another one the same size i just brought the corners up as well because i thought it looked a little bit nicer folded into three as well so i know roughly how big it's going to fold up to at the end but going to make another one that size but instead going to use this material which i'm led to believe is waterproof and i really hope is the case because that is what the top of my trailer is going to be made out of which is still getting made, it's just I live in the UK, so trying to actually get a decent day to do anything on it is near enough impossible. As always, start with a stencil. I make a lot of stuff not using a stencil, however, stenciling is big and is definitely clever. Right, so there we have our two sides. Now, both sides on this are similar, but not exactly the same. So choose the side of the fabric that you like the most, that you want everyone to see. Remember to put it face in, because you're going to be turning it inside out once you've done all of the sewing. But we do not sew these just yet. What we need to do now is get some leather, and we need to work out the around part. That's right, technical terms all round <laughs> see what i did there so what we need to do is we need to have a nice long piece that will run from there loop around belt buckle all the way up all the way down and along um i didn't attach it for a little bit of the way just so it allowed a little bit of give so the bag didn't always bring itself forwards um or you could attach it in two parts it's entirely up to you but i quite like the loop round effect it gives once it's all complete what we need to do is figure out the length of this piece so what I normally do is cut a bit that's way too long and then trim it down at the ends because that's just easier basically. So, leather. I don't have a ruler. So, we're going to have to make one again. Really need a ruler. Okay, we have our ruler. So now you need to work out the thickness as well and for that you need to know what belt buckle you're going to be using. Um... I also didn't get that ready. I swear I was planning on making this video and I haven't just decided to do it last minute, I promise. Okay, so I managed to find a belt buckle. So what we need to do is liberate this from the existing leather. Because it doesn't want to be there anymore. So that's the going to be the thickness of our belt buckle there. Oh, or we could turn it on its side, but it doesn't look quite as nice. So I'm going to keep it as it was actually intended. So we need a nice long piece of leather that will go all the way down and around our pouch. Okay, so now we've got our strap. That fits quite nicely through there. There's enough there to get a belt loop hole through as well. The trick to doing the belt holes, or the holes for the um, the actual buckle prong, I guess, um, is not just to cut a slit. 
you cut one of these, remember to always have a backing piece on it as well. Or else you destroy your hole punch. Trust me. Okay, so you do two. Do two holes like that. Then all you do is you just join them up with a knife. Don't try and cut like 60 holes because you end up with a really awful looking edge. Just like that. If I'd actually cut them all the way through. Alright, so you thread it through like that. Make sure you've got all the space towards the top of it so it can pivot up and around. Find out where the bottom piece is and then you can also do that I do quite like to do on a lot of them is put a bit of double sided cellar tape on the back of it. I'm actually going to do it now. You can't ever really see it. It's kind of hidden behind the leather. You'll never actually see it unless it starts to pull apart and if it starts to pull apart you've probably got bigger problems than the fact that you can see some double sided tape. So just double sided tape the back like that. Again this is the same tape that I use for stencils. So I normally have quite a lot of this laying around. So just press it in place. So when you're getting this sorted, you're ready to go. Boom, rivet. Nice side looking up, obviously. Gonna have the nasty side to be viewable. Except I did on mine. But yeah these bags as well you can kind of update for more modern times with obviously different materials. There's tons of different fabrics you could use. Use camouflage ones. You could probably even make one out of netting, to be honest. Right. So there's the rest of your arm. I think that should be long enough. I hope it is. So now what we need to do is figure out how it folds. So you get one over like this. One over like that. One fold up. And the next one fold up. The reason you don't want to take it to the top is to create that little loop that this rolls through. You need to fold some of it over, so you need to leave a bit of a gap at the top. I'd probably say minimum of a centimetre and a half if you're using power cords. It's quite thick stuff. But from the looks of things, that would go all around there nicely. Okay, so I wasn't actually too happy with how thick the belt thing, which I've now lost, how thick the um, the actual belt was going to be to begin with, this thing. I wasn't happy with that, I'm not going to be able to put on a nice thick firm attachment point. And as obviously I'm going to be giving this one away, I want it to actually last and be good. So they don't have to fix it. So instead what I went for is this nice long thick bit of leather. It's basically exactly the same as a belt loop, except it doesn't have a prong. So you just loop it over and that is very, very tight. So that isn't going to come away at all and there's a little bit easier trying to fiddle around with a belt prong so what we do now is we now have to attach the belt loop to it so we have to actually now figure out how many times we do want this to fold over and roughly where the belt loop is going to have to be an attachment point i'm going to go for three three seems fine to me probably hem that's that amount over the top that'll be used to create the loop for the string to go through so we'll attach that on there like this. That will come around, which means what we can do is we can hold it there. And using a Sharpie or another tool, probably chalk. You probably want to use chalk. It comes off a lot easier than Sharpie. I'm sorry if I'm really close to the camera and you can hear me breathing. But cut the ends off. I have a bit of leather that's about the same thickness. I always find it's nicer to get the suede side on the inside of a, of a belt loop just because it seems to grip the um, grip the belt a lot better and with these ones as well I wouldn't just go for a flat down belt like that because you want to try and get the maximum distance possible to hold it in place so I would actually loop it round makes attaching it a little bit more difficult but if you're probably building this you're probably a resourceful type you know that's kind of how you actually want it to attach now again, you can use rivets for this if you want, or you can sew it. Um, for this one, um, I think what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to sew it. Although, at this point in the game, I'm going to sew it a bit later on. Because you can do it now, you can do it later, whatever you want to do. But what we do now is we construct the bag. Bring in the almighty sewing machine. I have a genome decor computer, DC3050, and I'm just gonna sew these up 
and I will be back in a minute. Would appear I'm out of thread because I did not check how much was on my bobbin. This time I broke the thread that attaches to the needle. Well though. Now it's almost as though my machine knew and was stopping me going any further. Well, but if I sewed all of this together, how would I attach the strap? It's looking after me, it looks out for me, it cares, you know? What you need to do, again, is figure out what's going on with life. What's going on? What's happening? Take your bit of sticky tip probably directly underneath the attachment point yeah that looks like it would do the job so i said fold it into your thirds leave your overhang at the top that you're going to hem over that will allow the string inside of the draw element of your bag to in fact slide tape this in place just so you know whereabouts what's happening go on the back of it do exactly the same Get rid of that junk. Bit of double sided cell tape. Move it on the back. Attach that in a place that seems about right. And that should be good. And what we do now is we now sew that on, which is why it was silly of me to try and sew the entire thing up and why my machine was trying to tell me, stop. And yeah, and let me quickly just attach this via the power of sewing. Oh, well, it didn't like that, did it? My uh, sewing machine did not appreciate that very greatly. So we're just gonna go with uh, a number a number one stitch, I think. And hopefully... No. Okay. So we've got now our back strap attached. What I'm going to do now is just quickly feed the outside edges, and they are the outside edges, of the extra thread if I can find a needle, there's one, I'll pass this through the leather and the fabric, bring it through and then just tie it off just to make sure that it's all, all internal. Okay, so we've got that now attached, that's secure. What we now need to do is the belt loop, which needs to be attached slightly above that and slightly below the other bit. Now, I'm going to use double sided tape again, just because if, if it ain't broke, leave it alone. Don't touch it, because then you'll break it. A little bit of very, very thin a slither. Double sided tape there. I'm probably going to attach that on the stitching we've already done. So when we do sew again, it will be over the, um, be slightly above it which means we won't be going through the leather too many times and won't weaken it too much. And once you've done this, you can always flatten the leather out as well to, to make sure that it holds that, that bend. Um, let's attach it there. That'll give us a nice, a nice belt loop right there. So, now what you want to do is the most difficult one first. So mark the second one. So we now process this one to our fantastic and lovely sewing machine. Crowd effects for someone cheering. Please, future Chris. Just run that straight off the edge through the thin fabric just to tie it off the other side. So that is now the top section of that one completed and attached. I say top, I mean bottom. You guys know what I mean, right? Right. 
So we then attach this one back on there, which we knew was to go over the stitching from the last one. And then we kind of bring it round in a lovely, awkward way and get that set up to go through our sewing machine again. Please work. Okay, so now we actually have our belt loop attached. Again, I probably recommend laying something heavy on that, like a book or even uh, ironing it or steaming it down just to get it nice and flat so it doesn't bow quite as much. But again, if you don't mind that, then you don't mind that. Right, now let's get it inside out and actually finish off. Let's finish what I started. Let's do that outside and get that sealed to actually make it so it holds things and stuff that are your valuables. I broke the thread again. Whoever gets this, I don't want to say that this bag is cursed. It's totally cursed. And take four. That's the wrong stitch. Take five. So now what you kind of want to do is leave... The other one had an opening um, with the cord in the middle the back um, you could do it with that material because it frays quite nice and easily but looks pretty good this one I'm going to try and do a zip opening at the side which obviously means we don't want to completely sew up that side and allow the cord to still show through so we're going to end that set of stitches there so now what we need now that we've got a full bag still need to leave it inside out we need to get our again I'm going to use power cord just because I've got a lot of it we want the entire width be plus an extra little bit Let's say to about there of course we snip this like so you all know how to cut things we then grab a lighter um, 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 back in back in a second okay so you grab a lighter and uh, obviously just melt those ends so that the internal structure does not come away from the outside. Like so. Then blow an X or else it'll burn your fucking hands. Then you need to roll the top just a little bit. This is obviously going to be the amount of fabric that's going to go over the top of this. So find the halfway point, which is there. Put that halfway point inside the little fold you've just created bring the sides down either side like so bring your machine in again i am going to change to the zip foot just because i have one so i will bloody well use it bring that in roll that top back over obviously you are going to go back over some of the leather potentially which is why last time i remember now i did not do it to the middle so what I may actually do is just loop it all the way around. Should have possibly thought of this earlier. As I'm doing a single stitch, I may be able to loop. Do you know what? I'm going to see what I can do. Might be able to go over the leather and through this again. Who knows? Who knows? The art of creation. Okay, so we got to actually get it around the leather or past the leather, which is quite good. But because obviously leather is a loop, we can't run it over anymore. So what we're going to have to do now is I've unstitched it, going to restitch it through the other side and then just finish off this little piece here. So, re so oh, sorry, I've got a needle in my mouth. Rethread this through to the last point. is there set it down again and keep trucking now do i try and be clever even though i know trying to be a smart ass never works out i think i do i think i try and be a smart ass i think I can feed this fabric, so if I put the needle in to hold its position, I can feed this fabric through and under, and can actually continue without having to take the needle back out. 
Well, let's see how that works out. Oh my god, it worked. Right. Get that out of there before something goes wrong, like it spontaneously catches fire. Right, so all of those are now tied off. Get the ends of your whatever string it is that you used. Just tie a quick knot in that to get them together so they don't end up inside of it, like them toggles on hoodies. You all know what I'm talking about if you've ever owned a hoodie. So flip it inside out. I say inside out. Flip it the right way round. There we have it. That is, put your hand inside of it. It's quite a nice size. For the best part as well, I believe this is actually a waterproof material. So, fold it up, just like that. You all know how to fold. And yeah, just put the top lip through, bottom bit through, boom. You've got yourself a little pouch bag. And again, you can make these any size. I'm guessing just make sure that if you do make one larger, that the actual attachment point on the back of the bag, that the material can actually support its weight off of this. You can chuck all your stuff in, your pen, your lighter, your foot pedal, your GoPro case. And then, yeah, then just zip it off. And off you go. So, I'm going to be giving this away. What you have to do to win this, if you still want it after you saw the disasters for me making it, to win the bag, leave a comment in the comment section down below about what you would like to put in the bag. It could be your hopes and dreams. Even just loose alcohol, like not even including the bottle. It can be anything you want. Uh, subscribe to the channel as well, got to be a subscriber to win. Step four, you have to be going to Empire E1 this year or an Empire this year so that I can hand it over to you. I'll let you know how we're going to do that in a PM or something on whatever system we're going to be using it for. And keep an eye out on Instagram or on here or on Twitter for the winner. I'll cross post across to all three. But if you did like this video, hit that like button. If you want to be kept up to date with all my new releases, hit that subscribe button and be in a chance for winning this tiny little pouch of glory. But as always, keep on building. Just another quick little thing here. If you do ever make anything based off of kind of what you've seen on my channel, feel free to take a picture of it, put it on Instagram. Um, or if you're making YouTube video yourself, um, let me know because I'd love to see what people build off of the ideas that I give them. I think it's amazing and it's kind of cool to see what I've made evolve into something further.